last, uh, last Las Vegas yes. trip that we had. And uh, as soon as we, we met, we hit it off. Long right I'm like, ah. Um, don't play Diana, honey. <laughs> um, but uh, just my other wife. <laughs> San Francisco, baby. <bear> right. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, ever mm-hmm. since we met, we we I've just been in awe of you oh. and of what you've been doing with your business and your background. And I wanted to share that with you, ladies and gentlemen, um, and get a sense from your previous experience with with your previous business that you, sure. you ran a, 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 a company and. In San Francisco, which we're going to get into. Okay. So, actually, tell us a little bit more about how you got into the business and into what crazy you do. Real estate. Crazy real estate mm-hmm. business, yeah. Good. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you, Rick. Love it. So, <laughs> I think I might move down here. I'm going to move on 25th. Well, he's going to go on vacation in the summer. So yeah, we can house it. House it's the same as Oni. <laughs> well, I'm glad to be here. So, thank, thank you, you very much. So, I'm visiting from the Bay Area. Our market center is just outside of San Francisco. It's west by about 20 minutes, 20 miles. And so if you're not familiar with Burlingame, it's just outside of San Francisco. And I've been at Keller Williams for just uh, just about two years. My anniversary is coming up on the 27th of this month. And previously was with two uh, boutique firms in real estate. So total years in real estate, 11 years. So I started when I was really young, (laughs) Um, really super young. And before that, it was with Nordstrom. So I was with Nordstrom just over 15 years, and mainly in the Bay Area, and then a little bit in Southern California, and I was in New York for a bit, and I just met Debbie and told her that, because she's here from New York, yay. (laughs) And she's living here now, back again. I'm like, why'd you move? But So uh, with Nordstrom, I had several different assignments, which taught me a lot, and about 33 different roles at Nordstrom. They... um, they push you and promote you really, really quick if you're engaged and want to contribute and learn and all that good stuff. And some, I think the, the great thing about that company is that they do want to invest in you. And then right. the not great thing is they are, you know, as we all are with talent, we're people poor with good talent. So then you're, you're in roles too quick and you're not really contributing and learning and being a, a true expert in your role. So that was one thing that I, looking back, even though I was in that crazy cult mode, they call it the Nordstrom cult. You know, I want this job, I want that job. And I'm like, gosh, I should have stayed in, you know, less less different assignments and, and really been an expert. But nonetheless, it taught me a lot. So my last role at Nordstrom, I managed the Stanford store. So that's in Palo Alto, Stanford University. If you're not familiar, it's very sexy town, very much like LA, very young and hip and fabulous. And and that building had 542 employees. I know that because I still think about it. <laughs> so I'll never forget, 542.5. I'm like, what's my 0. 0.5? What's my 0. 0.5? Oh. Um, so, uh, and that was a big role. That taught me a lot, but it also forced me to expire. So uh, that was my, you know, big, like, I thought I'd be at Nordstrom forever. Mm-hmm. And my mom was in real estate. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. She's like, you'd be great. I'm like, oh, no, I'm dying at Nordstrom. I'm here. I'm going to die in the spa at Nordstrom to be specific. <laughs> That's where I love to be. And, uh, and, but again, you know, there's shelf life. If you don't leverage and have a team and plan, you do expire. I'm sure we've all kind of been through ups and downs and, and you kind of measure like, okay, why do I feel good about it right now? Why do I don't feel good about it? And it really comes down to people and systems for me. Hmm. So, um, so what yeah. about what was Nordstrom culture? You mentioned the cult. So what was oh, it yes. that you it was essential to bring or not bring to the real estate business? So the Nordstrom <clears throat> culture very similar to Keller Williams. So I was attracted to Keller Williams, and it was shared with me from a very good friend, Heidi Meyerhofer, in our area. Now she is the OP of a smaller uh, market center that will be grown really quick in our mm-hmm. area. She also runs her team out of Burlingame. Right? I'm not an investor not. in that, no. So uh, she told me about it. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I'm not going to cover loans, but thank you. Um, <laughs> I'm like, uh, and then I got to meet Rick, and we had a business meeting and told me a little bit more about it. And then I, as I was reflecting on it, I'm like, gosh, Keller Williams is very much like Nordstrom in a lot of ways because of the, the focus on people and the culture. And, and Nordstrom is a family-owned company. So, uh, and I was, you know, just kind of being a student about Keller Williams, and I was very happy where I was. It was a very, I would call it very small compared to our 100,000, you know, agents, you know, worldwide right now, but about 4,500 folks in the brokerage and about 18 different offices in the Bay Area, and I loved it. I contributed and taught and learned. I was the top agent there. I certainly was not looking for an opportunity. 
as I told you, I had a lot of different roles at Nordstrom, and I was really wanting to stay focused and not move. And it's expensive when you move, right? It's an investment, and your clients are like, why are you moving? And they say, why are you moving? And I knew, I told myself, I'm not going to make a move unless it was the best thing for my clients. Mm. Right. I'm not just going to move around. I'm not one of those. Oh, let's go to this brokerage and let's go to that brokerage. Right. Um, so but I would tell you that Norton culture, Keller Williams culture, again, about people, systems mm -hmm. and really investing in ourselves and having opportunity to do not just one thing. If you don't want to sell just real estate, you can have some leadership opportunities. Christian, you can have some you know, support opportunities. You can have ownership opportunities. And I just felt it was a very long term um, company and aligned with what I was wanting to do for my the rest of my real estate career. So speaking of the systems, the systems that you were taught or implemented at Nordstrom, mm -hmm. were some of those systems transferred into your real estate business? Yes. Okay. I run my real estate <clears throat> business just like I did my Nordstrom store. So mm -hmm. we run it, you know, we're not robotic. We don't run everything on a system. We're not perfect. We make mistakes all the time. But we run it like a, an organization. We run it like a team. We have a P&L. We have, we have business expectation, team expectations. What I mean by that is we all, as a team, are under, running a, on the same expectation. What can you expect from the, in each other? What can they expect from me? What do I expect from my team members? And when you set truly a separate expectation, not like, do I like that person or do a better job, then you can manage the expectation. Right. You're not really managing people. You can't say, I want you to do this and you have to do it. And this is what I want you to do. You really need to say, this is the expectation. Here's our goal. And then you manage to the expectation. And you're not kind of running around managing people and having them be something different than they are. Right. So that's how I really the number one thing I took from Nordstrom is running it as a business. This is a business. Right. You know, right now, I, you know, we were talking, I think I was visiting with Aaron, who was in a board meeting all day. I'm like, it's October. It's board meeting. It's 2015. So if we don't have our 2015 plan by the end of October, we're not running a business. Right. Right? So your team. Yes. Your team. Uh, many agents who have teams okay. or are aspiring to have teams or they're in the process of creating a team for their business. How did you implement... I know you brought most of your assistants from Nordstrom to all of them. To Kelly Williams, yes. all of them. So you have plenty of them. So I can help you. If anybody needs somebody on their team, just go to the E bar, Nordstrom. I'll give you tips. <laughs> just buy me a bottle of wine and we'll visit about it. Yeah, like, have a sit here. Uh, yeah, um, so you have three on your team or four? I have four. Four assistants. And four not assistants, but good question. So I have right. two folks in operations and two folks in sales and myself. Before I was at Keller Williams, guys, I had assistants, right? I had team members, and I, I kind of felt like I had to do it all. And you're out there. I'm like, what the hell am I doing? I'm, I'm scrubbing toilets, and I'm doing this and that, which is oh, fine um, because nobody's above it, right? But you also have to, at some point, leverage what you do best. What do you know what I kind of sat when I was approached by some very strong people at Keller Williams and Rick, you know, being the top one for me, you know, what am I, what am I, what do I do best? I, I suck at paperwork, right? I just, I, I make money well and I spend it too much. I'm like, okay, so I need to have somebody in, you know, control of operation budget because I'll, I'll be fine to make it. But then what am I doing with it, right? right. We pay taxes today. Holy crap. <laughs> I'm like, oh, really? My accountant's like, oh, tax day. I'm like, I know. I know. I'm like, I'm drinking already. I had a glass of wine with lunch. I'm like, you know, wired it out. Um, so I really said, what am I? I know. I'm like, sorry. I haven't had wine since 1130. Um, I won't have another glass until after I'm done with you guys. Okay. I'm like, tax day. So I really tried to understand if I'm going to make this move and invest in myself and make an investment for my clients and also for the investment that Keller Williams made. I'm like, what am I going to do to not just continue on, you know, doing a great job in real estate? I wasn't, nothing was bad. It wasn't broken, but what do I do best? And when I, you know, kind of stepped out and said, what do I do? I really do best at creating, I'm, the, I'm a great rainmaker. I love to tie a rope around our clients, not officially, but tie a rope around them. <laughs> well, I'm, not, I'm not cowboy, right? <laughs> but really, and you know, when, when folks are our clients, they know it, they feel good, and really, they're not our clients unless we're an escrow, right? I mean, everybody, I love that too. Because Nortum always says, like Blake Nortum used to say, I'm like, you're always as good as your last flash. So our flash is just like when we're looking at volume, right? So you pull up a flash, you're like, oh, Debbie, you only have, you know, 
hundred thousand and I'm like, oh, be quiet. We'll have a good hour. Be quiet. Shut up. You're in Seattle. But so you're only, you know, you have to be really careful about that too. So what are you focusing your time on? So I'm really focused on rainmaking. And then my job is also attracting the talent on my team and also coaching them up and sometimes coaching them out. Like I just told Rick on the way here, I said, gosh, I had to, I had to coach our showing specialist out. It was lovely. <laughs> our exit interview was great. I helped her get a great buying job, and she got it for herself, but introduced her. She goes, I want to be a buyer. I can't handle commissions. I'm like, okay, let me introduce you to five people, and she got a great job, and she's thrilled, and she'll be a great re referral source for us and all that. But when you're bringing on folks and you're deciding what you do best, it's very hard because in real estate, we run it very horizontally. We're doing 500 million things a day, and then we could have a family. We could have boards that we serve on, but you really have to say, are you spending over 50% of your time daily or weekly or monthly or annually on the things that you do best? And if you are, you should have enough leverage to then hire somebody to help you do the other things. So that's... Speaking that's, of volume. Mm -hmm. Yes. <clears throat> Um, so this year, when we met in the last time we saw each other in, in Austin, you were on your way to 73, I think it was 75 million volume. Yes. So we, yes. So in contract right now, but just over, just under 45 million and then written <clears throat> closing here in the next gosh, uh, 30 to 45 days is just under 20 million. Mm -hmm. And then our, our, our goal for this year is 82 five and we're not. And we're, we're, I'm expecting and committed that we're going to do that. So we have a little over, a little under 20 million to fill the gap. So what kind of services do you provide to your customers mm -hmm. to have that kind of volume? Right. We style flex on our services. So what that means is not every client, you can't treat every client the same, guys. <clears throat> There's, if you're going to do, you know, if, it, if it's 10 million, 20 million, 30 million, 40 million to 100 million, which is our goal for next year, is that we put up, we, we do have systems in place to understand that like, everybody's being touched, right? Every, what's your system to touch everybody? And that could be an email, it could be a mailing, it could be something that they're invited to a philanthropic event, whatever you can do to touch everybody. And then it, it changes, not only based on price point, but some of that's price point, because every, you can't treat a condo like a $20 million property, right? right? You just can't. So you have to have systems in place that everybody feels taken care of, because we love those, those, those great sales that aren't $5 million. We love them. They pay the bills. They help us invest in our you know, luxury business if that's what you want to do. So every, everybody gets touched. And then I do have a board of directors. So I have a board of directors of 10 folks that are all clients except for two. Actually, so wait, let me stop because yeah. I know you mentioned this to me. You, your business, your real estate business has a board of directors. Yes. Interesting. Yes. And I, about a year ago, I reached out to Rick. I'm like, gosh, I'm, I'm, I've been wanting to formalize this for a while. And I've had it in, in casual, informal board of directors, the, like five folks I would call all the time. Like, what do you think about this? And I'm doing this. And I, I publish our flaws and results to them. And I'm like, okay, why don't we just formalize it? Mm -hmm. and, and I, you know, I personally picked up the phone. I talked to my team about the concept of having the board of directors to take us to the next level and also have to have a really good eye because when you you're when we're all here talking you know I was visiting with Kelly before we're all talking like how are we doing this or what are we doing what's our next step we all are very supportive of each other but it's very cool to get somebody and or a group of folks outside this crazy business they still love you like you know you're great and know your flaws but it's very interesting outside of the business and that you ask them to contribute to your business how accurate and they're honest yeah. honest accurate you're not going to your husband <clears throat> or your boyfriend or your daughter or, or christian i mean call me because you're great i love you i'm like oh be quiet <laughs> i'm like making mistakes all the time but it's very interesting now that we formalize that although we're not doing it perfect yet we've had three um like skyping slash conference conference calls i update them every month where we're at so they know how much is in our pipeline they know our closed business. They know our in-contract business. They know I'm down here. They know that we coached out a person and we're hiring, looking to hire. So they are very invested to give us great, great input, which is, is very cool. And it's great because they not only only support your business to watch over it, but it's also right. supporting your business. Because it's also in those, you have 10 individuals absolutely. seeking referrals. And those 10 individuals that so we <clears> do, we really focus on our business on a referral basis. 
and we have about just under 200 referrals in, about 176 this year. And our goal was 130, so we smashed that and we adjusted our goal to 200 about in June. And so we better down, we'll make that 200. Um, so you met your yeah. goal, you set a goal for your referrals. Yes. So at the beginning, last October, <clears throat> we set our volume goal, our commitment. What is our commitment mm-hmm. to each other in our in our group? So what's our our actual commitment number? And that was 72.5. What's our goal number? 82.5. What is our referral number? What number are we going to receive in referrals and work on it and really measure it, which was 130. And what number are we going to give out in referrals, which was 50. So you always, you know, looking at all sources of your business, right? And understanding, you know, not only are you, what are you getting, but what are you contributing? What are we also going to do on a charity basis? How many times have your are we going to be in training? When are we going to be out of the office? When are the office closed? All those things should really be formulated in the October month before the next year. And then, of course, as your year closes out, then, of course, you finalize that. And that's every big company, guys. This is the big companies that suck and are doing well. But, I mean, when you're calling folks, when you get calls all the time for charity, yes? Yes. Yes, yes yeah. right? And so I'm like, why are you calling me now when it's the end of the year? Do you not know how to do charity? I'm like, charity is planned the year before. So if folks are calling you the last bit, either it's a half ASS event, possibly, or impromptu, or it's based on need. Could be an you know, earthquake or fire, things like that. So it's always interesting because we're getting calls all the time. Because you know why? Normally, we don't have a business plan. And we're like, sure, how much is it? You know, right? But if you have a platform for giving, KW Cares, or if you have a platform for referrals or business and it's, it's planned in advance, you don't have a problem with folks asking you, like, right. what's your goal? You know, where are you at? What are your units? Will you donate $1,000 for this? So really, I mean, the really strong folks are planning on the giving community are planning now, October 15th. So. Well, we don't have a charity event this Saturday. So <laughs> money uh, what is your primary source of business? Referrals. Referrals. Yeah, repeat business. So last year, our volume was just about where we're at now in volume, which is under 50 million. We've been hovering for the last seven years between that 40 and 50 million. Mm-hmm. And that was another thing that I thought, you know, okay, if I want to make a move, and go from a great company, very different, to another great company, Keller Williams, very different, then what do I want to do? Because more is not always better, right? I mean, just to do more volume and more volume and more volume, it's not always better. But my, my thought was, and I visited with Michelle about this too because she was from retail, I was like, okay, I would like to take it above that $50 million, and I want to make more profit. I want to contribute more on a charity basis, and I want to take weekends off. And so how do I do that? And I really looked into the Red Book and talking with folks in Keller Williams, like, how have you done it? Because, again, what I loved about Keller Williams is I didn't have to lock myself in a room and by myself and decide how am I going to get there. I just asked Follow Rick, yeah. and I'm like, who do I call? Can I visit with Anita and say, what are you doing? What have you done? Do you have a team? So you don't have to start from scratch. If you have a new idea, that's awesome. Love it. Publish it. Share it. There should be no competition at the top, but you don't have to start from scratch when you're with a company like this. Which is it's what we're there. Doing today. Right. So, so yeah. it's contributing. So our business, fifty <clears throat> percent of our volume last year was on a referral. Another twenty percent was on repeat business. So folks that ha- that we sold the house to, and that we're representing them again, and then another twenty percent was mainly due to social, more luxury. We belong to Country Club. We do. I'm a member of the uh, American Red Cross. It's a Tiffany Circle, which is the women's philanthropic group. So that kind of more of a social philanthropic was about 20%. And then 10% was miscellaneous. Could have been a fluke, they, you know, which I call a fluke, like you just meet somebody at open house, right? Like that's like, a, that, that's like an accident because, you know, there's kind of crazy people. You don't people. plan on that, right? No, I'm like, great. You know, we're there to represent the property. And, of course, we want to meet new folks and continue <clears> to <throat> get business. But we're not, like, planning to you know, sell a $5 million house off a, you know, open house referral, but about 10%. Um, so you don't invest in direct mail, you don't call expireds, you don't call FISBOs, you don't... No. Yeah. I do direct mail for my properties. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So we do, you know, beautiful mailings for our, every property that we list, um, be it a just sold or just listed, something that's unique. We try to do it catching fun. We <clears throat> just do a postcard that's all crappy with our picture on it. We do it, you know, really focused on the property or the neighborhood or something special. 
or if we're doing a, an event coming up that's philanthropic or if we want to use that venue for it, then we do a direct mail piece. But it's not, we don't do any, the only folks that we call is our, our database. So I, that's my job. On over 75% of us, our lead gen is done by me calling clients, but I expect everybody to lead gen and call. So operation calls our both operations ladies calls, our showing specialist and our buyer agent calls too. Because if you're the team leader of, of your team or the rainmaker, you can't do 100% of the lead gen. You cannot do it. It will not work. So you have to manage the expectation, not the person, that they also do lead gen for you. And you have to have a system for checking it so you can thank them or coach them up or out. Okay. <laughs> yeah. that's, that's good actually yeah because if you yes. don't know guys if you don't have a system right i just have them log right in <clears> and you know if, if they i mean i only have a, i have a small team compared to you know 200 folks or whatever so i mean there's no way i'm like don't you dare lie i mean i'll trip you you know I mean, <laughs> in your high heels in your high heels i'll trip you so i just know right in your home you know i just yes i'm like uh, this is not an option you can always tell me like you didn't get to this week and then if that happens once or twice that's fine if it's three to four times that's not okay so how do you set your goals good question it's an algorithm we do it based on history <clears throat> we look at trends not only in our our team our business but also you know national trends worldwide trends what's hap what's happening out there we never make excuses for trends like oh the stock market's down like oh big deal you know it's going to go up again or whatever or earthquake or you know obviously there's things that you look into but um, i also look at you know what i expect from a volume piece by each individual so when i look at my team and i look at two people in operations and two people in sales all those should equal volume mm -hmm. And if we have, if we can, if I cannot expect at least 10 million for how many people are on our team and contributing to each one of our properties and clients and all that, then they probably shouldn't be there. Mm -hmm. That's my algorithm. Maybe it could be more. And I look into our average price point. So our average price point has fluctuated a bit. It was a little higher and it's gone down a little bit. And now it's popping back up. So on average, the last seven years, our, our price point was just above two. It kind of between 1.9 and 2.5 million. Then it popped down last year. And you really have to be careful with that because when your price point pops down, that means you either need to shift, you need some help in operations because you can't just do, you know, if you're doing 50 <clears throat> transactions versus 100 transactions, there's obviously very different in regards to your support help and getting it done. Now it's popped back up just under 2.5 million now ending uh, third quarter. Mm. And so. you also have a marketing plan. Yes. What does that look like? So marketing plan, we plan in October as well. So we look at what we've done. We grade <clears throat> everything. So we grade our mailing. We grade our brochures. We grade our website. We grade our logo. My logo is trademarked. We trademarked our logo. We look at what we spend in anything that has our logo on it and say, would we repeat that again? Right? So we really look at collateral, mm -hmm. what we're doing now, what's working, what's not working. What other folks that we respect in the community, what you guys are doing, I love to share. Like Kelly goes, I want to come up and see you. I'm like, yes. <laughs> and the reason why I love going to the office and I got to see you and all that, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Like, look at how great this looks and what are folks doing? How can we share? Um, and so we really look at our collateral. We look at what we did year to date, and, you know, finishing October, what we feel it costs, because we keep a, you know, P&L, but again, there's some things you spend that you're not tracking exactly in the right deal. And then we say, okay, what are trends in the world? Is it more online? Uh, you know, what, what can we, what are we wanting to achieve? And then we actually put a dollar amount to what we're going to invest in our marketing. And then we allocate that per year. So, so what percentage of your GCI goes into the marketing? 20%. 20%. Yeah. And that's high, guys. As I said before, I'm good at making it. And I, I spend, I'm working on that with the Keller Williams models. But, you know, it's all about... You know, it's again, I'm not going on vacation for marketing. <laughs> I'm spending money in, in your business. So you're actually investing. And my philosophy is really investing in what you're doing, not just invest. You know, like none of our marketing has my picture on it. Um, mm -hmm. Our branding has our picture. That's different. So marketing branding, we all know the difference. So marketing, you know, it's all, it should be all about the, what our fiduciary is, our assignment is, which is the property, right? That is the property. Branding on a more institutional level about the sharp group and how we contribute and our results and that we go in, we dig in, we drill down way hard on presentation. And that means we get 
quicker sales and higher prices, we, we do that. But really that's branding because it's not marketing a property, okay? So that's, we differentiate branding and marketing. And it's about <clears throat> 10, it's about 20% total for the last kind of five years, it's having around 20% of our GCI and it's about 50-50, branding and marketing. Mm. So. Your customer service um, systems. Mm -hmm. Would you mind sharing a little bit more on that? Sure. Thus, so just kind of like what we do. Like what happens with your customers, with your clients? When do they become clients? When they're still customers? Right. What do you do after they close? What yeah. kind of customer appreciation events do you do? Because mm -hmm. I know we, we chatted about that a little bit, mm -hmm. so I want to see if you can share with us. Yeah, of course. Gosh, we've we've done so much. You know, that's the fun part, right? I mean, do you, I mean everybody does you know great stuff for their clients, of course. And I'd like to hear about what you guys are doing. Mm -hmm. But what we do is we our goal is to not make our customer service hard on the team, right? So we've all been like, we have a closing, like, what are we going to get? What are we going to get for the client? I'm like, do they drink? I'm like, oh my gosh. You know, I'm like, what if they don't drink? They're pregnant. I don't know. So, it, it, you know, put together, our goal is they put together a plan of what you feel good about, that you've learned from others. Again, borrow, steal from others. And we prep it from the beginning of the year. So we have... Um, for instance, we have the Jack, Jack London sign, the Credo, the Jack London Credo. We have that printed onto a sign. We have it in our office, and we, all of our board of directors has it, and that's been our, kind of our focus. Then we have the amazing, you know, this last year has been, you know, this is amazing. Because you know how we overuse that word? It's so amazing. <laughs> you know, it's like Madden, like amazing, amazing. It's fabulous. It's fabulous, you know. So we did a, a, an amazing quote. So we ordered 50 signs, right? And we have, you know, we're doing, if we're working with Jay Champagne, just say in Napa, because we're nice and close. We love it. So anytime you come up, you have to see me. Um, and they'll do, so we just put the Debbie Sharp logo on there, the Sharp Group logo on there. But we go ahead and invest. And many times, I've done this, sometimes you don't have the time or money, but a lot of times I buy it. If I need to get my spending up for tax purposes, I hedge it. So I buy it in 2014 for 2015. Mm -hmm. And it's in in December, and it's exciting to kind of get you going for next year. So we order our doormats, we order our, like phone cleaners with the Debbie Sharp, you know, Sharp Group logo, bottled water, our gifting. And we try to be what we call style flex with our kind of gifting or customer care. So for our folks who give us referrals, we call it the RAP, Referral Appreciation Program. Anybody who's given us a referral, they're in RAP and they are wrapped up. We love them, we wrap them up in a blanket, take great care of them. We've had three events this year just for rap. So mm. <clears throat> those can be something as, um, and then we've, we've opened it up, but okay, we've done rap for three years. Let's invite everybody who's given us a referral. Or we did a wine tasting event at our club and we had 15 people give us more than five referrals this year. So we only invited them and we had them picked up. We had a little wrap gift and they were at our club and I said, you couldn't take no for an answer. We hand delivered, you know, an invite, like we thank you. And they already been thanked, you know, but you know, we had it. So you, you really have to come up with what's your plan and then execute it. Because I think what happens with all of us, we get busy and you can't even like, like you sold this great listing. You're like, I didn't even mark, I didn't even like brand that. I didn't even tell the community or neighborhood or our country club or the American Red Cross, the Tiffany Circle that I sold that. $8 million listing. And then it like, it's a year ago. I'm like, is that relevant? Holy crap. You know? So as long as you have it organized and you come up with a system that you love and you can have fun with it, I think that's huge. In addition, when you, when we receive referrals and we plan this all up, up front, you know, in the beginning of the year, um, anytime we receive a, re receive a referral, we have a bell, we ring it in the office. We're like, Woo! we dance, we do the whole thing. But immediately that day, that day we send out a thank you card and meet it. And with a gift card in it, and or a book, or one of our amazing signs, or Jack London Credo signs, something we connect with the person, the refer or, mm -hmm. like who's referring it to us? Not just like get a crappy card out and like oh, thank you, you know, or do it a week later, do it that day. And if they're not local in the San Francisco Bay Area, they we FedEx it. So Ryan Seacrest, who's one of the team team leaders in the the Beach Cities um, Market Center, he gave me a referral about three weeks ago and that's kind of that's one of the reasons I got to be down here I was I saw Mike and 
I was able to speak on a panel for that group, and it was a great educational day. So he gave me a referral, a very nice, doesn't matter if it's a $5 referral or a $50 million referral. <laughs> so I said, tell me all about it. We rang the bell, of course, and immediately we put out a text. We call it the Sharpies. The Sharpies, Debbie Sharp. <laughs> we, put, we had a text with our the group Sharpies. of the Sharpies. We like got a referral. We're at 177. We're at 178. And immediately everybody knows that we got the referral, who it's from. We don't have to say five things. From Ryan Seacrest. He's in L.A. He's a T.L. He's amazing. And the, his name, the referee, is Greg. And I'm like, and we have one person on the team in operations that is responsible for prepping the note card. Like, thank you for referring us, Greg. We all sign it. And I'm like, and if one of us is like on our deathbed, the other person signs for it. Like, get the card out and it needs to be pretty. We put a sticker on it, gift card in. It's all branded, the Sharp Group. And then it's out and we thank them. And I always follow up with a text or a phone call. Like, thank you for the referral. I will call Greg today. And we have a system in place. So if I'm not in the office, like if we got referrals today, if I'm not in the office, the next person that would take that position would be Carol, my lead buyer agent. Mm -hmm. 28 years at Nordstrom, been with us now two years. She's amazing. If I got hit by a bus, it would be fine. She'd just take over. Not planning on that. <laughs> but So if we get a referral today, like I always say, you know, the baton, the bell is passed. Let's go. Let's land the plane. So she then would lead it. She would then call Ryan, thank you. Or we have communication preferences in our database. We know Ryan the texter. Text Ryan, thank you for the referral, the Sharp Group. And immediately would, you know, FedEx out a package. And that, again, is customer care, folks. Because it's not just about the folks that are buying and selling with us. Like, how are we, you know, how are we, like, customer service is also taking care of us, right? Folks, I really focus on, too, like, okay, what are our gifts for the folks that sell our listings? As soon as we get into contract and with or without contingencies, we immediately get a thank you card in the mail with a gift card. Small. It could be a coffee card for $5. It could be an Apple card. But, like, how do we have reciprocity within the broker community, the realtor community? That is service, too. And that was really, I know I'm going off base here, but that's no, what got me into the business. When I first started, I took Lisa, who is with me now in operations. She was with me at the Stanford store, and I literally, we had nothing to do at 9.05 in the morning. I'm like, oh, we've called her two people. That's great. <laughs> we've had three cups of coffee. Yeah, my tongue is burnt because I, I drink it with a straw. I'm like, I'm a mess. I'm like, my mouth is burnt. I have nothing to do. And I'm like, okay, what do we do? And I said, you know what, Lisa, go to the board, which is so old. I feel like I'm like 85. Go to the board and get a number. I want the top, I want top 1% in our area. I want top 5%, top 10%. I just don't want the top broker, but first top 1%. And I call those folks. I said, I'm Debbie Sharp. I'm new in business, but not new to business. I was at Norwich for 15 years because you know, people say, oh, who are you or whatever. I'm like, yeah, I'm not new to business. I'm just new to real estate. And I said, you have like five minutes. I'd be happy to buy you coffee, lunch. I'd be happy to host your open house. I'm happy to host your tour. And that was folks in my office. But even outside of my office, because I knew nobody in real estate, but I'd been in the community a long time. And that's really how I got going. I said, you know what? I'm going to be presenting an offer across the table from mm -hmm. those folks in minutes. And it took a lot more than minutes. It took months. Um, but, it, but that is, and so we, our whole customer service philosophy is like, how do we think and appreciate the folks that we're doing business with? Right. Right? So at the end of the year, what do we do for them? You know, do we send a nice letter? Something that costs five cents, guys. It does, it's not about money. Um, but immediately when we get into contract. Also, when we are on a, and we're representing the buyer, we send an immediate thank you card. Thank you card. Thank you for letting us present our offer to you and your client. We love you. Um, there's so much we can do to gain reciprocity within our, with our community, because overall we're, we're a big group of folks mm -hmm. that you know, want to please and work together. So I think on a back to customer service, how do we do it? I think you need to think global. Like, you know, what's, how do you want to service your clients? How, you know, how, how do you want to service the brokerage community? How about our vendors, right? Service right. that. And then also we have a criteria for reciprocity. So we have, you know, 25 core vendors and we thank them immediately. We, they do great inspections or, you know, we retain, we retain an architect, a contractor and a feng shui master. So how do we give service to them? But how do they service us? And how do they service our clients? Because literally one strike, they're out. I mean, if, if it's a major situation where they had a, an issue with a client, wrong or right, because I always say the customer's always right, and it wasn't handled right, not if they make a mistake. I mean, I make a mistake three times a day, probably 30 times a day. But if, if they truly did not handle it right, 
it's a real coach out like that. But also, they're not. If you have you looked the last time, like ha, what are vendors really doing for your business, the Sharp Group? You know, your individual business. And it's interesting when you track it. You're like, oh, I've been doing inspections with this inspector for eleven years. I have a bottle of water, his check right there with the key. Everything's perfect for them, and they have not given us one referral. Mm-hmm. So we started that five years ago. I'm like, okay, vendors, love you. <laughs> I'm going to expect a lot more from you, not just a good inspection, not just, you know. So, again, a lot of this is not covered by RESPA. You know, of course, the lending and, and escrow and stuff, of course, you have to be careful with, you know, what you're expecting for reciprocity. You have to, you know, don't go to jail or whatever. Um, but for most, 90% of our vendors, folks, it's business, pure business. And if you look at it, I, I encourage you to look tonight or tomorrow, like, on your vendor list, what you call maybe your top 10 vendors, and, you know, okay, have they done a good job? Yes. Do, are they the best in, in the industry? Is your vendor the best in the industry? What do they do unique and special for your clients, for you? Have they given you a referral? Mm. It's interesting when you <clears throat> kind of look at it. But we do have a whole mm. service and kind of, you know, reciprocity focus on our vendors too. You took the referral program to a whole different level. Oh, like yes. You're taking, like, you, you, I should probably ask you where... Of your referral business, where everything is coming from, yes, right, like brokers, agents, mm-hmm. former clients. That's how you look at it. It meant everything. It just everything is a referring business. Yep, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, so one of the questions that I wanted to ask you is because um, you know we're dealing with luxury market, and uh, I don't know what the market is like where you are, mm-hmm. but KW doesn't seem to have that image of when they think luxury, they think KW. Right. Right. So how do you, is that is that same in your area or it is it is yep it is and yet you're 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 seventy five eighty five point two five million mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. dollar producer right how did you combat that that's a good question so uh, you know that was one of my questions and it wasn't a concern it was one of my interests when I was make you know deciding to make a business move uh, to Keller Williams to better my clients and our team. Um, and myself and my family is, okay, luxury. And I could tell that we weren't there yet exactly where I I came from a very small luxury boutique that wasn't there at all in systems, right? Mm-hmm. Guys, nothing's perfect. I promise you that. I mean, when you're perfect, then you're done. You expire and you go. And again, what I liked about Keller Williams is that they had a luxury division and they knew it was important to focus on that throughout the world, not just here, but as right. we grow to South Africa, and you know, across the a globe, and also a, a commercial division, right? And now we have, you know, I met Danny um, at Mega Camp, who, and he was at, you know, our event yes. for Citibank, and he's doing basically the the farm and ranch vineyards, things like that. So, what, it's forward thinking. It Keller Williams, us international, the the group, the leadership group, is luxury there yet? No, and I don't think luxury anywhere is there. When folks say Sotheby's. Sotheby's website's fabulous, but the systems behind it, not fabulous. That's not me critiquing it. That's that's good friends and folks in a group that we work with on luxury that just say, it's sexy, but there's no content. Right. Where we have content, but it's not quite sexy yet. <laughs> right? There's not, nothing's good or bad. It's just different. So how I thought I would con, you know, combat that is I, I would contribute. Like, what can I do? So, like, not just, like, it's not done. Like, why isn't it done type of thing? But, okay, like, how can I help? And, again, some things I wouldn't offer to help, and it's not my expertise. But luxury is my passion, although I love the day-to-day business as well because it funds that, uh, and it gives you perspective. And it's those folks grow up to be luxury, which I love. Um, So I think that things like this, you know, having the Michael Lewis Mm -hmm. marketing collaborating as a group of luxury agents. If you want to be in luxury, if you are in luxury, you should, you know, be a part of the Keller Williams luxury division. And that is growing and, you know, as well. And I think anything we can do on a local basis to collaborate and share and make a difference, like I told Rick on the way here, I actually, First Republic Bank, do you guys work with them down here? Yeah. Private Bank, Aaron, okay, folks, they are stellar, in my opinion. Seller, seller. So Michelle Watson is the chief executive officer for First Republic Bank. And I do a lot of business with that bank because you have unique properties, right? You can't just like go to Citibank and say, hi, I want a loan for $8 million. Um, you know, because people have money for a reason. 
they're not they're leveraging their money and a lot of the the transactions are cash but then they want opportunity to do it after but they want to close in five days and not share their social security number right now and they want to do it on the back end so you have to have those relationships so i said can we get michelle who's amazing for an, for an event, we would like to invite recruits. We'd like to have our agents, you know, be available to learn from her. And we also would like to have be a client appreciation, bring those clients in. And they said, yes, Y-E-S. So then I'm like, okay, like how do we make it not just about our, our market center? I want it like the whole Bay Area. You guys can come. I'll tell everybody. But it's like, you know, that, that I think step by step as we do things on a local basis in California or Rick's offices, whatever we can do. And then when something's working, the luxury division, Kathy and I and the group and the folks that serve on it as the board, they're not going to poo-poo anything. And again, things like you think of luxury portfolio, luxuryrealestate.com, Sotheby's, all those folks that you think you know are really strong in luxury, they didn't start strong in luxury. Mm. It took time. Right. So I will tell you, it's not affected my business with our clients. Guys, our clients are not... They're, they're like, oh, you're Keller Williams. I sent them the Stanford business study. The folks that I wanted their input from and I said I was making a move are top 100 clients. I learned that from Nordstrom. So when you're at a store, you know that the Nordstrom family is great at this. They're like, we know you have a million clients and you have 542 employees. Your goal is focusing your top 100 customers. Here they are. Do it however you wish and spend however much you wish. And it's also your department managers leading them, not leading every employee, just the 50. I'm like, just the 50. And the P&L, really, that's your three things. And again, that three was really 303, but that's what they <laughs> measured us on, right? Those three. So when I sent the Stanford Business Study, does everybody know about the Stanford Business Study for Keller Williams? I think I sent it to you, Kelly. I'm not sure Anita's this, but that is a great study. So I sent that to my top owner clients, and I said, you know, I'm, <clears throat> this, I'm considering making a move. And I just want to share this study with you. These are business people. They have a lot of money, and they've earned it. They're not trust fund babies. These people are smart, and they're like, that is, that's a great, good for you. Wow. And I said, I'm going to take some ownership, and I want to grow, and I'd like to be an OP and all that good stuff. So I said, okay, let's send that off. And they were all impressed. None of them said, do they have a luxury platform? <laughs> you know, where, do they have a luxury <laughs> URL? I mean, none of them asked me that, right? And over the, in the top 100 folks, not all of them are luxury, but what's not luxury here, guys? I mean, we're in LA, we're in Santa Monica, Brentwood, right. San Francisco Bay Area. I mean, everything's over a million. And then, you know, like in Hillsboro, where I live, which I don't live in this average price point, the average price point is $6.5 million. I live in a teardown. Um, <laughs> it's like a tent. I'm like, don't roof, don't fall over. Um, but, you know, I mean, I just feel like we all are, it's all luxury. It's all expensive, right? So, but it's none the of them asked me about that, Sean. Right. But I do think, are we getting there? Yes. Are we there? No. And when we get there, we're not going to be there yet any because it's going to evolve. But, you know, anything that you all feel that you're missing, take it to Christian and say, hey, can we do this? Can we do that? Right? So I, I feel that we have grown a lot in two years. I've been at Keller Williams two years. And I think just on a, on a true image and luxury feel and the people that we want and that are attracting, I think we're getting there. And it's all about the right people, too. Right, so recruits, like who do you want to be in the office next to you? You should be telling this guy or your team leader, your friend. And, and that doesn't mean we'll get them all, but if we recruit top in luxury <coughs> folks or not, great people, great people, and they want to get into luxury, we can help them or commercial, that's how we're going to get there. But it's really not about, none of, none of my clients in two years are asking for like anything they're not getting. No way. So. Are there any questions that I should have asked that I Ooh. didn't? Um, <laughs> well, no. I don't know. What about you guys? I mean, yeah, I'm is this helpful? To you guys now, I have so. two oh. questions. Yes. Oh, sorry about this. Ah. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. My first question is, do you still get your discount? Uh, uh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 33%. Okay. Yes. It's, it's horrible. horrible. I wish I didn't. Actually, yes, um, do you give Nordstrom gift cards to you? I do, <laughs> of course, reciprocity. What's of your course. Well, uh, my, um, my main question is that when you started, did you start with a lot of clients or did you ever cold call? Did you ever 
do all the, you know, the hard work or you can't do stuff? <laughs> oh, I did. A, yes. That's a good question. I did a lot of hard work, but I didn't cold call. Uh, and I didn't come with a group of clients. Because when you get into this business, guys, the worst folks that you want to approach is your, are your friends your family, and what you were doing before. Because they think of you like, oh, how cute. She's getting into real estate. Mm-hmm. Oh, how cute. I'm like, cute? I'm like, that is not a good word. I don't like cute. Um, but, you know, so I, I actually said to myself, I'm not going to ask my family. I'm not going to ask my friends. I'm not going to ask anybody from Nordstrom until I do $10 million in volume. Mm. Because bottom line, it's very hard to go to folks that know you, love you, or don't know you love you from work that are, you know, half of the folks when I left nursing, like half of them were like, oh my God, like in tears, like, oh brother. And half of them were like, oh, bye, ciao, ciao. You know, because I was a freak, like made them all use black pens. They're like, I'm getting blue pens. I'm like, oh, the counters look horrible. Every time I go there, oh. <laughs> I mean, they're like, yeah, weirdo, goodbye. But no, until I, until I had some volume and experience under my belt and made some mistakes and then made new mistakes, I didn't go to my, my sphere of influence. And that was the best advice I got from a very good friend who's on, who's from Nordstrom, who's on my board, Karen McKibben. And she and I worked together forever. She was always the boss of me. I said, oh, God, I'm working for you again. I love you. <laughs> I'm like, does that mean we have to quit drinking wine together? She's like, heck no. But now she's the president of Canada. We're opening four stores there. And I actually see her next week. Nice. I'm going to go to the opening. So, but I didn't. What I did is I immediately, within my office, small boutique, there was about under 100 folks, over 70, and I went, I was, went to the office. Go to the office. Go to the office. <laughs> Even if you have a home office, go to the office. I came to the office. I was dressed, and I, w- I really looked. I was a student. Like, who do I want to learn from? Because you can learn from everybody, what you don't like and what you do like. And immediately glommed on to somebody very similar to this handsome devil. I call my daytime husband. He and his partner are celebrating their 13th anniversary on Saturday. And he's on my board as well. Mike Herner, he was very young, started in the business. He's been in the business almost 30 years. He's just turning 50, so he's got him very, very young. And I said, you know what? I like, I like, I not that I'd like to, like I want to go party with you. Of course, we do that as well. But I resp- I'm like, I like how you do business. He was present. He looked sharp. He was at every meeting. He contributed. He rose his hand. He wasn't, uh, he shared. And I'm like, I'm like, hi, I'm Debbie. He's like, hi. And I'm like, I love how you drink coffee with a straw in a glass. <laughs> I go, I do too. He's like, oh, great. And I said, is there anything I can do for you? I will do your tours. I will do your open house. I will gas your car. I will do anything. He's like, you're not casting my car, love. But, and, and he's like, okay. And I, he goes, I don't do tour. And I started doing tours. And people are like, How, why are you doing caravan or tours? And it's not your listing. Do you know any people I met doing that? And how much? What's a tour? Um, so you host properties Broker, on Caravan. Open house. Open house. Open house. Uh, you Broker. Broker open. What do you call them in that? Caravan. 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 So I did that. On vacation. Yeah, no, I wish a tour in Italy. Um, and then I did open house for two years. I did open house every Saturday and Sunday. So I, but I had to earn respect every Saturday and Sunday for two years. I told Michelle that. I'm like, oh my god. Now I, t- I'm, I primarily take weekends off over 50% of the time I take weekends off. My goal next year, 100%. Um, but yeah, lots of work. And really my business with Nordstrom referrals, family, neighbors, all that started about, in my opinion, this is a guess, I'd have to look at my numbers, about five years into the business. Okay, five yep, years. Five years. So this year we've received 11 referrals from Nordstrom. Um... But, um, yeah, five years into the business. Rick? So I have some questions and follow-ups to some of your comments. Sure. Um, if you had to find the five sources of referrals, both incoming referrals and outgoing referrals, and what's the difference between the two, what would you say are the biggest avenues of referrals for your business? Biggest is clients, the folks that we've taken care of. So people that we've done business for that were not in business you have to ask for it while you're in business, not like after you close. Because if you don't ask while you're with them in the car or whatever, but it's folks that we've done business with. Like they are, you know, we tell them. Like when, I, when, I, when they're buying a property, folks, I always say, they're like, oh, my God, we have to put an offer for $2.1 million. It's only listed for one i I'm like, you're never going to sell this house. I promise you, you have to give us 10 referrals a year. 
but you're never going to sell it. This is a legacy property. So we, we, we start that the beginning of the, the relationship. So it's folks that we've helped before that is 90% of our referrals. It's like an owner referral program. Yes. Mm -hmm. What about agent-to-agent -agent referrals and using the Keller Williams opportunities and systems? What do you focus on in that for inside referrals and outgoing referrals? Yeah, so uh, a lot. I believe that we all, with 100,000 agents, and just let's, let's look at California, like, right? I mean, let's look at California, like on, in this world that we have. Um, it's... It's such an opportunity to be an asset to each other. So that's a big focus of ours. Our big, big focus is referral, agent referral. Our goal this year is to give out 50 referrals to agents, brokers throughout you know, the world. And our goal next year will be over that. We'll, we'll just meet that this year. We're at 42 out and that you know, will definitely hit 50. So what, what I can would qualify an agent to get a referral for you, from you mm -hmm. in order to make sure that they stand out as yep. a person that you trust to, to refer a deal to? Yep, so that's a good question. So it's relationship. Okay. So it's connecting with <clears throat> folks that I feel would also then portray how we, not to be like, oh, I, I do it just like Debbie. Of course not, you're gonna do it different. But I really look at how you run your business. Are you present in the office? Are you full time? Do you do you have a team? Are you a single agent? Doesn't matter to me on that. But I want to make sure that when we get a referral, and assure you when you when we get a referral, that there's a system for taking in that person, even if they're not going to buy right now, or sell right now. So a lot of times you're talking in a year in advance, right? So I always say, what are your systems for staying in touch with your clients? Who do you have on your team? Who will be showing the property? Do you have a buying agent showing specials? Like, what are your systems? And if you don't, that's okay. Single agent's fine, but you still have to have the systems. So I really look at, and I when I, I call many times, I would just call Christian, like, who would be a good fit? So I call the TL or the OP. I'm like, hi, I met you at Mega Camp, which I have all those cards. I categorize them where they're at. Are they OPs? Are they TLs? Are they owners? Are they agents? Are they teams? And I would just mainly start, if I had a referral for here, I'd call you or I'd call Rick. Who do you think would be a good fit for this million dollar property? Who would be a good fit for this $10 million property? And they're not selling today. They want to know what it's worth for their trust, because taxes were due today. And they want to understand like what they need to do to get another million. And it's a year to three year process. I would really go on results. So another question, again, um, you talked about marketing versus branding. Mm -hmm. And you're about a 50-50 ratio on marketing versus branding. Explain the difference between, like when you talk about branding versus marketing, marketing is very specific, property specific versus your listings yes. versus building your brand. When you invest in your brand, what are you investing early on mm -hmm. and what are you investing long term on brand development and brand recognition? Yeah, okay. Well, that's a, yeah, it's a big question. So in regards to when I started, I did have a severance leaving Nordstrom because I was with them for a long time. And I spent every cent of that severance to start my business. Because first off, I didn't pay. I didn't get paid. So I just set up an account to pay me. I'm like, oh, oh my gosh, I don't have a check. I'm like, this is interesting, right? <laughs> so I set up, I set up, you know, I took 30000 so I could, you know, pay myself for six months. And I spent the rest of the money on true branding. So I, I hired a company. I did my logo. I wanted to have a logo that would live, that you wouldn't change. You know, you start something, you're like, oh, I'll stop it. Every time you do that, it's expensive. So I really spent six months to go through, I, I said, take me out 15 years. How will this translate and look? Can it adjust in colors? Can it be utilized softly in charity purposes? Could it be utilized if I have a daughter or son in school for branding purposes? Could it be utilized with our marketing on a, on a property basis, more on a day-to-day, month-to-month? I wanted something that would you know, be a living organism. <laughs> I'm like, a live it. And so I spent a lot of time on that and I dug in. And I wanted that to also be something that we can metamorphose if I were to go grow a team because it was only myself and my store secretary that I took from Nordstrom with me. So that's what I would call branding. And how do I, and so your point, your question is how do I like utilize that in my true business plan, Rick? Yeah, so about building the branding, but then taking the branding mm -hmm. to, to leverage it through the marketing to make sure that your marketing 
is representing your brand. So yeah. if you're, so do you have a brand tagline like yes. you know the sharp group does this? Yes. And, you know, elevator. So pitch. our brand tagline is service and expertise. Okay. And then we have a logo, which is Mm-hmm. Debbie Sharp and it says dot com at the bottom our, our full website this is Debbie Sharp and we've metamorphed this now to the, the Sharp group but it's still the same font and we still have the Debbie Sharp logo with the all that so it's been able to metamorphose into as I've grown from a single agent into a team and if I chose to go back to a single agent sure but how do I bridge those within my marketing so everything we put out everything has our logo and our tagline everything I mean, if we put out an email, our signature line has it. If we put out a text, it doesn't. Um, if we, I mean, I'm like, can we do it? They're like, no. I'm like, okay. Uh, no, yeah. Tomorrow, next year. Um, so everything we, everything we put out, we are very con- conscientious about having that there because I'm a believer of that growing brand. We were, myself and five others throughout the company of Nordstrom, were on the task force when we were developing and changing the brand the Nordstrom kind of from the scroll, like remember the Keller Williams old scroll? Mm -hmm. And now we're like, KW, woo, all fancy. (laughs) So that's a metamorphosis, right? So I don't know if you recall, I don't know if you shop at Nordstrom, but you remember there was like the Nordstrom with the N, like how your kids do it, right? Like, you know, more like this. And then it went to the block, like N-O-R-D. And then it went just to N, like if you have the app, (laughs) it's just N. (laughs) And then, you know, if you're everything, like it's just, you know, so that I was on that and I love it. And that's what I studied in college as well. Um, but every, everything I go, and when I am working with our graphic mm. designer and working with my team, so everything they, they put out every time we answer the phone, hi, it's the Sharp group. How can we help you? It's not just like, hi, hello. It's not about Debbie Sharp's group. No, the Sharp group, how can we help you? You know, so answering the phone, everything. So it has to be vertical and horizontal. So if you just start on a logo, Spend some time and spend a little bit of money. Don't spend crazy, but make sure it's something that you can do you on a daily basis with every correspondence you do with your counterparts, your clients, the, the charity folks, anything you touch. Um, and then make sure you feel like it's an investment that, I mean, like our clients crack up. They're like, when do we get more Debbie Sharp water? Like we donate tons of the Sharp Group water, you know, to schools, all of it. And like our clients like email us, can you drop off a case? We love that water. I'm like, oh my God. And the other day I was at a property. We have eight properties on the market right now. And I see like Debbie Sharp water on the nightstands. I'm like, okay, yeah, it's working. I'm like, I love it. But anything that you can do to get out, right? And and I think it's important that Rick's asking this too, because I think we get busy and like, we got to have this listing on today. But I mean, literally we'll postpone stuff if, it, if we can't do it right. And our clients are pushing us, but like, no, no, no. You have to do it right for you, number one, for the property. But also, this is a business. It right. is branded. You can't do, you can't just put stuff out there. It should be branded and marketed properly. And if you can't do it, you stay up all damn night and do it, or you push it out a day. But don't do it halfway. Sounds to me like you're really working on your business all the time, not in your business. Right. right. You know, I try to do, I purposely take a day a month to work on my business and not in it. Mm-hmm. And then uh, when we collaborate on our goals, I can, you can always do more on your business versus in it, but we have to also make money and right. pay the bills and things like that. But, you know, I recommend you taking a morning out, a day out, you know, it could be quarterly. It depends on, you know, really your business model and plan. But if you're not, like, st- stepping back and understanding, you know, what does it look like next year, two years, three years, four years, five years, and then coming back to execute it, and again, you're going to make changes, guys. You're going to be like, oh, that was a good idea, but it's not working. Be careful about making changes too quick, but you want to assess what you're doing. <clears throat> but you really have to take some time to work on your business. What I want to do is I want to thank you so much for and doing this for us. Question, yes, please. absolutely. I'm sorry. Yes. <clears throat> it's just too valuable. <laughs> not going to let her go. Mm-hmm. Um, technical question here. Uh, once you get a listing, yes. obviously you have a marketing system. Mm-hmm. And, uh, <clears throat> Any other questions? questions? All good? I, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, I just missed that. <laughs> how sweet you are. <laughs> and who you want to crush graciously. <laughs> right. Very gracious. With style mm-hmm. in the presentation. Yeah. Well, my mission here was accomplished. I really, really, I think talking about relationships, it's a relationship-based business. Yeah. And just as much as I adore you, I hope you guys get to mm-hmm. spend some time with each other and, and, mm-hmm. and improve your relationships with each other and collaborate and take this group to the next level, and that's mm-hmm. how we grow. So I wanted to thank you one more time thank for doing you. that tonight. For My pleasure. 
uh, my invitation to come here and uh, it's time for us to